chapter twenty eight of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva household gods and goddesses the years which followed seemed very short ones to camilla a time of quiet delight of restitution and fulfilment general bent had wanted them to come and live with him in the old house down in madison avenue and jeff in his whole-hearted way had given him the promise but it was camilla who had thought it wisest for them to have an establishment of their own the house was just off the avenue near the park a rented place for camilla had not yet arrived at the state of mind to consider new york their home but most of jeff's time was now spent in new york seven months of the year at least and she was beginning to learn with reluctance that before long only their summers could be spent at glen irwin on certain afternoons camilla sat in the library downstairs with her embroidery frame she always seemed to be sewing now her lap covered with thin flimsy fabrics the borders of which she was embellishing they were very tiny pieces of material apparently shapeless but from time to time she held them at arm's length before her her head on one side and smiled approval of her own handiwork it was here that jeff liked to find her thus occupied he had not even contracted the habit of stopping at a club on the way uptown and unless he was detained on important matters she knew when she would hear the sound of his key in the latch outside mrs ray made it known that she was not at home except to the chosen few the general came on certain days for his toddy gladys on the way home from teeing it mrs rumson dolly haviland and rita cheyne each for a peep behind the curtain rita cheyne came oftenest and stayed longest she had no social responsibilities she claimed except that of seeing the small garments in camilla's lap made successfully she was hopelessly bored more demurely cheerful more buoyantly pessimistic than ever what a joy it must be she sighed to have an object in life my objects are all subjective i have a dreadful fear that i'm getting to be a philosopher camilla bit off her thread and smiled platonic she asked i'm afraid so i used to take such desperate fancies to people i used to want to make people like me whether they wanted to or not now i'm really indifferent i actually don't care whether my hat is on straight or not it's such a pity i used to like to be svelte fluffy and smartly groomed i didn't mind suffering the tortures of the rack if i knew i was effective now i'm positively dowdy i don't care what i wear so long as i'm comfortable and i'm actually getting fat camilla the horror of it camilla looked up at the exquisite afternoon frock which fitted her slender figure as only one made by patrain could and smiled yes rita positively corpulent it's a pity you really had a good figure once the worst of it is that i don't seem to care she went on oblivious i used to love to dress for moods for my moods and for other people's i thought that art could solve every problem that came to me art she sniffed contemptuously art in a woman is merely a confession of inefficiency i used to think that art was immortal now i find that only nature is camilla lifted the tiny sack with its absurd blue silk cuffs and examined it with a satisfied air when she had finished she leaned over to rita and whispered with the air of an oracle nature is immortal it is you're right 
she sighed but it's my nature to be merely mortal and i'm going to die very hard i must continue to hide my inefficiencies by art you're not inefficient camilla corrected you're merely feminine extravagantly feminine yes feminine but not womanly oh i know what i am she concluded fiercely you're a darling said camilla softly you're very much more womanly than you want people to think you are why should you take such a delight in these camilla laid a hand on the wicker basket beside her rita took up one of the tiny garments and examined it with minute interest it's very pretty isn't it but quite silly imagine anything so tiny what a lot of trouble you take and you've made them all yourself they're really exquisite they're art's tribute to nature rita said camilla with an air of finality mrs cheyne sighed my mission in life is ended camilla i'm quite sure of it now you've convinced me i'm actually envious of a woman who sits by the fire and sews baby clothes your industry is a reproach your smile a reproof and your happiness a condemnation i know you're right you've really solved the problem and i haven't i never will i'm past that now i'm going to grow old ungracefully yielding the smallest fraction of an inch at a time to the inevitable i'm going to be stout i know it and probably dumpy i could weep camilla who's talking of weeping here said a voice and general bent with his stick came thumping in oh you rita he laughed women never cry unless there's something to be gained by it rita offered him her cheek and camilla rang for tea in a moment mrs rumson came in i knew you were here rita she said bending her tall figure for a caress how teddy weatherby's machine at the corner and teddy is he waiting still such a nice boy but absolutely oblivious of the passage of time i thought you'd given up your kindergarten rita put in camilla laughing i have but teddy is my prize pupil he's taking a postgraduate course and when they all laughed at her she turned on them severely i won't have you laughing at teddy he's really an angel i'm going to tell his mother said mrs rumson rita took her teacup and sank back in her chair absently oh well perhaps you'd better she said i'm going in for square-toed shoes and settlement meetings the general grunted and sipped his scotch but when jeff and cortland came in the women were still laughing at mrs cheyne jeff walked across the room to his wife and kissed her father and caroline hello rita well sir from camilla please give an account of yourself you'll have to speak to court we stopped in at the club for a minute Chane was there and uh, hal delaney perrault steve gillis douglas warrington and two or three others they wanted us to stay for dinner but we didn't of course not said camilla so decisively that rita cheyne laughed there she said pityingly oh jeff a subject and a slave as well aren't you really going to let him go camilla camilla looked up into jeff's face with a heavenly smile of course if he wants to but i don't want to said jeff sinking into a chair with a comfortable sigh this is good enough for me besides he added mischievously it looked like a meeting what kind of a meeting of the rita chain protective association jeff you're horrid said rita but she laughed i'm not he said calmly they have my full sympathy and support i told em so your sins are finding you out my dear cousin chuckled the general they always do in the end oh you're hopeless all of you 
sighed the culprit setting down her teacup cortland finished his drink in leisurely fashion and dropped into the vacant chair beside his father well we put it over he said quietly the bond issue yes sir we had a fight in the board but we got mckinter's vote at last and jammed it through that was all we needed i didn't think it was possible the old man exclaimed it wasn't easy but jeff managed it i didn't sir jeff interposed court did the whole thing we've made him president we made it unanimous in the end by george court i'm proud of you i always knew you had the stuff in you if we ever woke you up oh i guess i'm awake all right a fellow has to be down there he leaned forward and picked up an article on the work basket where's his majesty he asked of mrs ray camilla glanced at the clock asleep i hope he's been very dissipated lately he was up yesterday until seven takes after his father said mrs cheyne scornfully at that moment a small cry was heard upstairs and camilla flew the lamb she cried and from the hall they heard her telling the trained nurse to bring the infant down at the bottom of the steps she met them and bore him triumphantly in he was a very small person with large round blue eyes that stared like jeff's they looked at nobody in particular and yet they were filled with the wisdom of the ages what a little owl he is said rita but when she jangled her gold purse before his eyes he seized it with both hands and gurgled exultantly he knows a good thing when he sees it laughed court got the gold fever too what a shame said camilla indignantly he hasn't any kind of a fever have you cornelius the child said da didn't i tell you he knows he has such fuzzy pink hair said court rubbing it the wrong way do you think it will stay pink you shan't be godfather to my son if you say another word cortland here nurse take him they shan't abuse him any longer she pressed her lips rapturously against his rosy cheek and released him mrs rumson gazed through her lorgnon while the infant with a cry of delight pulled the glasses from the general's nose no respect for age none at all said mrs rumson after a while they all went away rita chain to her postgraduate pupil mrs rumson to her brougham and court and his father to the walk downtown leaving camilla and jeff sitting at the fireside alone one armchair was big enough for them both she sat on his knees and leaned back against him close in the shelter of his arms you didn't want to stay out to dinner did you jeff she asked oh yes he said of course i did i'm very fond of dining out she laughed contentedly they had dined out only once this winter and that was at his father's house there was a long silence poor rita she sighed at last what's to become of her she's not really happy jeff i sometimes think she paused what that she still thinks of you jeff laughed i hope she does why silly simply because she never gives me the slightest reason to think that she does jeff rubbed his nose thoughtfully that's one too many for me don't you know that a woman always judges another woman by the thoughts she suppresses that's nonsense no it isn't i won't have you say that what i think is nonsense she turned her head toward him and looked down into his eyes are you sure you never cared for rita not a little sure it was the forbidden way jeff do you like this way our way better he held her closer in his arms and that reply seemed adequate 
she asked him no more questions until some moments later and she asked him that one because she always liked the way he answered it a sudden loud rasping of the dining-room hangings on their brass rod and camilla sprang up hurriedly she even had time to go to the mantel mirror and rearrange the disorder of her hair before the butler came in to announce dinner he was a well-trained servant end of chapter twenty eight end of the forbidden way by george gibbs march twenty second twenty fifteen